So um, we have this new Power Automate button in um, Power BI or Power Automate Visualization, which is essentially button in Power BI. It might be just a button, but it is very cool. We can do a lot of stuff with this and it makes our reports, yeah, more than just reports. Um, I did want to create a video similar to this uh, a couple of months ago. Then I got wind that this update was ch it was coming and I kind of realized it would make the video completely redundant. And I'm happy that I waited, not because it saved my own time, but rather um, it is just so much better now. It's this, this functionality is just really should not be underestimated what um, benefits it has in reports and our processes and um, yeah. So what am I talking about? So the original video I wanted to create all that time back was simply how to update a data set in Power BI with, with a button. And it was a bit harder back then. There were some steps you had to go through. It was um, a little bit of a pain. Um, now it is just so very easy. Um, what am I talking about? Um, let's have a look. Basically, if you want to get the button, um, I'll stop saying button. I'll say visualization. Eh? Um, if you want to get the visualization in your um, your PBIX, it's not this standard, you know, add this um, preview feature. It's the visualization pane. You go here and you go get more visuals and you just basically search for um, automate really. And it'll be right there and you hit add and it will arrive here. Once it's there, you click on it and it'll tell you what to do really. So it's pretty, it's really, really straightforward. Um, so there are a couple of things. The first thing it says, add data. Now you don't have to add data if you want to do something simple like refresh a data set because you're not referring to any specific data. You're just referring to, you know, this is the action, then do this thing for everything. Um, if you want to do something more precise, then you do have to add data. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. We'll start with just refreshing a data set, which is really clean, really straightforward. So to do anything, really what you want to do is just click on these three dots and click on edit, and it takes you to your Power Automate screen. You can then either select something that you already have, um, or you can create a new um a new flow. So I already have one, but I'm just going to um, delete that so we can do it on the video. New, and then you have templates which you can choose from. We'll go to Instant Cloud Flow. We create it ourselves. And um, just to show you how very easy it is. If you're not familiar with Power Automate, there's nothing that you have to worry about here. A lot of what you can do is very straightforward. Of course, it's really only limited by your knowledge. Um, so I would use this as an opportunity to learn as much as you can about Power Automate and bring in some of this functionality to your reports or your processes because it's very, very strong and it really, um, it, uh, yeah, it just makes your life a lot easier. So new step. Then I, like I said, I just want to add um, a step to refresh the data set. So what I've got to do is type in Power BI and it'll automatically filter to all the Power BI functionalities and it's right there. Refresh the data set. Nice. Choose my workspace. And this one. Choose my data set. It's this one. Save it. And that is pretty much it. Other than you have to ensure that you click the apply button. So it actually links it to the button that you have. One other thing to think about. I would suggest that you look at this run only users. So basically you can specify which users in your organization have the um, the ability to use this button. And um, if you let anyone use it, especially you look at stuff like refresh our data or anything really, but really refreshing data sets, you're going to potentially have quite a few people click on the button, refreshing the data set, and that could get a little bit excessive um, and annoying. So maybe just allow only a few key users to have access to this button. But that's of course up to you. You just you set that up here. I can't do that here because I don't um, you know, pay enough um, to have that on my personal account, but on my work account, I could just add this um, edit 
and then add the users using the email address. That's what you're going to do. So we go back and now we have our button, this run flow. Um, yeah, you can do what you can do with all buttons. So you can just give it a, a different name. So change the text. So refresh data set would make sense. I really can't type at all. Whatever, change the size. Of course, you don't only really have a huge button. That would be ridiculous. So make it normal button size. And then you can do your standard, you know, take off the fill if you want and background, whatever color you might want it to have. Give it a nice pill. There you go. Beautiful. You know, standard format and stuff. So now I have a button. Of course, if you want to use this button in the PBIX, as always, you have to press the control, then click. Um, but of course, when it's published, it's just a standard click button and it works. So that now clicking that would refresh my data set on my, my published report. Beautiful. Um, what therefore am I doing here? What is this all about? Now we're taking it a step further. Now we're saying I have a situation where I have, um, a manual input file, which is my Excel on my left side here. And I also have a SharePoint list and I'm saying, this data should end up here. However, instead of completely automating that, we want to check the data before we allow it in. So we want to just, we know that there's a value here and a value here. First of all, are there any differences? Yes, in this case there are. And when there are differences, we'll give that a quick check. So then our options become this data. Yes, is correct. And therefore I want to add it to my SharePoint or this data is not correct. Therefore, I want to delete it from the list. So how are we doing that? First of all, it's very cool that we can do that. It's also very cool that we can do it so easily. Yeah. Um, it's very similar to what we already did just with a couple of extra steps, just two extra steps, in fact. So in this case, we do need to add data to our visualization. The first time we didn't because it was just simply refresh the data set. Yeah, but we're doing more things now. So as you can see here, I'm taking these two field values from my Excel list because I want to use those actually within the flow itself. That's an important step because if you don't add them, you can't select them at a later stage. So I'm going to go here to edit so we can look at my flows. And this was the um, delete and refresh, this one here. And we can have a look to see what that incorporates, see what that entails in the, um, in the flow. So our first one that we created together was this one and this one. So we click the button and it refresh the data set. We only have two extra steps and one of them is just the time delay. So what we got, this was called a delete a row. So to find that again, it's really easy. You just go to your add an action and you just type in the word delete and it will come right up there. Delete a row. You click on it and then you select the location of your file, the table, the column and the key. So this is really, you know, click and select, click and select. It's beautiful, it really is. So I'm just going to delete this because I already have it. So here I've got my delete a row and I've selected the location and then I've selected my key value. So basically when the button is clicked, delete a row based on my key value. This delay exists because it tends to be a bit of a time delay in saving stuff in Excel and then that being picked up in the refresh. So I wouldn't just simply apply and then refresh. I always add this delay, whether or not a one minute is enough. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it should be two minutes, but I just added that so you can see that in this process, we, we tend to add a delay. So that's what that is again. And at the very final step is exactly the same as the first one. You just refresh the data set. So basically you click a button, you delete a row, you wait a minute, you refresh the data set. Beautiful. Here we go. This one, we have something similar, slightly different. It is the update and refresh. The update and refresh does, doesn't delete it from Excel, but rather adds it to my SharePoint list. So create an item again, if you want to find that it's simple. You add the action, you go create item, create item in SharePoint. You click on it. As we said before, we select the location 
we select the list name and then you come up with this create an item. So I've selected the location, I've selected the list name, I've selected basically what should go where, and that's it. And it works. And then of course, just like the other one, we have a one minute delay and we have a refresh of a data set. So it's literally click the click a button, add an action. So search for your, um, the one that you want, enter it in, click, select, click, select. There's no code going on here. This is, I mean, Power Automate's cool, but together with Power BI with the buttons, absolutely love it. So that's what we have. How does that work? Basically the functionality. So let's have a quick look because now we have this published version of the report. We have our list here in Excel. We have our, excuse me, we have our table in Excel. We have our list in SharePoint. And we have our report, which is showing us that there's one difference. So what I'm gonna do therefore is I'm going to, now this is the important part. Um, well, this is one of the important parts. You can see here that I have a slicer. Now that's because I can choose which one I want to delete because here we just have one value. It's possible that there are multiple differences. There's many rows added. So if I can say, okay, K key eight is incorrect, but key nine does not exist in nine, which could potentially exist, um, is, is correct. And I only want to delete one of them. So I would select the one that I want to delete. I'm in this case, what I'm see, saying is that key eight is the difference, but it's incorrect. I don't want to add it to my SharePoint list. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my slicer. So I'm going to use my slicer and say, I want to delete this value from my Excel list, my Excel table, sorry. If I were to select seven, it would delete seven. So in this case, I'm saying key eight, that's what it is delete it from my Excel and then refresh the data set. Now this is one of the wonderful strengths of this new process because it really takes sliced values. Yeah. It actually, you could, it changes what it does depending on your, your input in the report itself, which is really, really wonderful. So I'm going to click on key eight. I'm going to click on delete Excel and refresh. Now we can go to this list and we can see it work. See, eight has now just magically disappeared before our eyes, but it's not magic. It's power automate, power BI awesomeness. So that has been deleted. As I say, I've put in this one minute delay and that is because if you do it straight away, it tends to not work. So if I timed that correctly, once this starts to refresh, it will be picked up and this report will refresh. And these values of course will no longer exist here and here. So as you can see now, this has, well, it was refreshing, but it stopped already. So it's a very quick refresh. So this is refreshed. So did they pick it up in time? We shall see. Ah, doch. So wonderful. We can see that what this did was it deleted from the list, refresh the data set, and now my data set shows that there are seven here, there are seven there, there are no differences. Cool. Very, very cool. But then someone comes back and says, oh my God, Ben, you deleted my entry, and you know what, you made a mistake, and it should be there, or whatever. They say, okay, you're quite right, Ben, we added eight and it was too soon and now we've added eight again and can you please check it now to make sure that it works or check it to make sure it should be entered into our SharePoint, you know what I'm saying? So we add it again. Go back to our list. Let me just quickly update this. And now we have it back in our because we have, we added it back in for whatever reason, 
The reason today is because that's how this example is working. Um, yeah, so again, we're back in the situation. This Excel says eight. This says we only have seven. We have a difference of one. So what are we going to do about it? In this occasion, we're going to say update SharePoint and then refresh. So I'm going to click on that. And then we're going to hope that it does as intended, which is add the data to this SharePoint. And it did see work it, make it do it makes us harder, better, faster, stronger, beautiful. And then we go back to our data set and we kill it with my refreshes today. And um, again, we had that one minute delay. So if all works as it should, this will then refresh. And then the report will show eight here, eight here, no differences there. And as we can see, the report is indeed refreshing. Um, it's a very quick refresh because it's a very small data set. We go back to our report, we click refresh in the browser, and then we see what happens. And we see that it goes according to plan. And we have our eight here, eight there, no differences done. Beautiful. So that example may be a little bit abstract. Um, but it does show the functionality of what you can do with Power Automate and Power BI together. And um, I personally love it because there are a large number of use cases of, of how this can um, work or add a lot of value to um, processes that I see every day. Um, yeah explore it as much as you can because there's a hell of a lot more than i've just showed in this video and um, you know you can also when a refresh is done it can send an email and it can you can message certain users it's really really a fantastic tool and will make your life a lot easier and will certainly make some people happy within your organization that um, things are just a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother, and that they can now action things from reports. You know, this is um, this is a this is a big thing. This is a big deal. So enjoy it, use it, learn from it, and uh, yeah, I hope you also think it's very cool. And uh, thank you very much. This is a longer video. I'm aware of that, um, but I hope I held your attention. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye, and um. If you like this video and you want to check out others, check out my channel a bit more and it would be great if you could click the subscribe button. Thank you very much and goodbye.